All right, here's some more problems to help prepare for the exam. First question says determine whether the vectors u and v are parallel or orthogonal, which means perpendicular, or neither. So let's take a look at this one. I think the easiest way to look at this, now we have a formula in our formula sheet, which is the cosine of uh, theta equals the dot product between the two vectors and then the magnitudes multiplied together. And you're more than welcome to use that. It's just, it's probably easier to use slope. If you graph these, one goes over five up three, and one goes uh, back 2.5 and down 1.5. So they could be parallel. Um, when we, the way we can check that is with slope. So let's do rise over run. Rise over run would just be the y over the x, so it would be 3 fifths for vector u. And then for vector v, the slope would be negative 3 halves divided by negative 10 fourths. And instead of dividing by negative 10 fourths, let's multiply by negative 4 over 10. And that way 2 goes into 4 twice, double, ne double negatives cancel, and that gives me 6 over 10 which I can simplify to two goes into both of them, three-fifths. So they both have the same slope, which means obviously they're parallel. So let's try one more of these then. Let's determine whether these vectors are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So once again, slope's the way to go. Negative 12 over 15 is the slope from u, and five over negative four is the slope for v, if I do head minus tail slope type math. And then I can simplify this one. Three goes into this four times, three goes into this five times. So I have negative four-fifths, and I have negative five-fourths. Okay, those are almost opposite reciprocals, in which case they'd be orthogonal, perpendicular, but they're not because they're both negative in this case, so um, they are neither. Okay, uh, the next problem you're going to want to know how to do is to eliminate a parameter. So to do that, you're going to solve one of these for t. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, I'll choose the first one. To solve for t, I'll add three to both sides and then I'll divide everything through by two. Don't forget to divide everything through. And then I'm gonna substitute this in for t into the next equation. So I'm gonna have y equals nine minus four times my new t, which is x plus three over two. And I can simplify that a little bit. So I'm gonna uh, distribute the negative four to both terms and divide the two into both of those. So I'm gonna have nine plus negative four x over two plus negative 12 over two. And um, I can simplify that a little bit more um, this is really negative 6. Um, so I have, if I add those together, I get 3 with the 9 and the negative 6. And then 2 goes into this twice, so that gives me negative 2x. So there's my um, simplified equation, and that is obviously a line. You're also going to want to know how to find a line uh, between two points, but a parametric equation of a line. So what I like to do for this is graph both these. This is negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is right here. Uh, 4, 2 is right here. So what I do is I uh, do vectors to both these points because I can do the vector subtraction to find this other vector that goes from here to here. And that's going to be the key. So to do the vector subtraction, you do um, basically um, these two points head minus tail. So this point minus this point. So it's going to be uh, 2 minus 5, which is negative 3 for the y coordinate. And then for the x coordinate, it's 4 minus negative 2, which is 6. So what that means is that green vector goes over to the right 6 and down 3 using the head minus tail rule. Now I'm going to use that for slopes. When I write my equation for x, that's going to be my slope. I'm going to have to go over 6 for every increment of t that I use. It's going to be 6t. And I'm going to start with either one of these x-coordinates, but I'll choose the first one. I'll start with the x-coordinate of negative 2. And then I'll do y of t and do the same thing. My slope is going to go down 3 for every increment of t. And I'll start with that corresponding y coordinate that I used before, which would be 5. So there's my parametric equation right there, parametric equations, plural, for um, this line right here. Now, the key, what can change about this is these points here. It actually doesn't matter what you use, as long as it's a point on the line somewhere. So I used this first point right there, but I could have used the second point that gave me 4, 2, in which case this would have been a 4, and this would have been a 2 and that would work just as well. You just have to use a point on the line, and then uh, obviously then here is the slope, which we, we got by using this vector, because that told us what, how we changed from the first point to the second point. And another thing, obviously, is you can check this in your calculator. Make sure that you're in the right mode to do parametric mode, and then you know type the equations into y equals, those aren't the right equations, but graph it and you'll get the line. Okay, the next problem, we're going to use an algebraic method to find the rectangular coordinates for the point given. So we'll just do 15. So th those are polar coordinates. Polar coordinates, to graph those, what we do is we rotate by this angle, 7 pi over 3. 
um, and then we go out 1.5. Now, 7 pi over 3, you can convert that to degrees if you want by multiplying by 180 over pi, and that gets you 420 degrees. That's the easiest way probably. Or you could look at it in terms of fractions, so 3 goes into 7 uh, 2 times, 2 times 3 is 6, and you get a remainder of 1, so it's 2 and 1 thirds pi. So you can look at it with numbers and then say, okay, well that's like um, 2 pi plus a third pi. Well, 2 pi goes around 360, and then we still need to go 1 third pi, which is another 60. So that would be up here, and then we go out 1.5. So there's different ways to, to look at this, but um, either way, you got to graph this point, understanding that what you have is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If you make a triangle with the x-axis, where the hypotenuse is 1.5, you can use that to say, well, I know my special right triangle values, um, and then say, okay, well, I can just divide both sides by 2, and this is 3 halves then, 1.5. So dividing by 2 gives you um, 3 halves divided by 2, or multiplying by 1 half is better, which is 3 fourths. So this is 3 fourths here, and then obviously this is 3 fourths as well. And there's your coordinates right there. Your coordinates are 3 fourths comma 3 fourths square root of 3. All right, the next question, let's just do 21, um, is just getting familiar again with polar equations. It wants to know, identify the points where maximum R values occur. Well, obviously if we look at this, we don't even need to graph it. We can find maximum R values and we think about where cosine is the biggest. So let's just look at cosine on the unit circle and find out where that's the biggest. And that's the biggest at 0 or 2 pi. Um, so if we stick in 0, we get a cosine of 1, in which case our R value would be 5. 1 times 3 plus 2. So um, if they want to know what, where theta, we would say theta equals 0 or theta equals 2 pi would give us this R value of 5. Okay, uh, next question, let's do 47. It wants to find the partial fraction decomposition. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor the bottom of this. This factors in x minus 4, x plus 1. And we're going to then try to rewrite that of something over the first factor plus something over the second factor. And how we can do this is by now solving this. So we're going to distribute through by um, this denominator x minus 4 times x plus 1. I'm going to multiply everything through by that. Now this whole bottom cancels and I get 3x minus 2. This factor cancels and I get a times x plus 1. And then this factor cancels and I get b times x minus 4. Now what I'm going to do is distribute and collect like terms on the right side. So I get ax plus a plus bx minus 4b. I'm going to compare that to the coefficients on the left. So let me get the x's together. This would be ax plus bx. Let me get the constant terms together, which would be a minus 4b. And what I'm going to do is factor out an x from uh, the first linear terms and just compare now. So if I compare, I know that here's my x and here's my x, so this has to be equal to that coefficient 3. And I also know that this constant term has to be equal to negative 2, just by comparing. So there's two equations that I can write, just like that. And I'm going to multiply the top equation through by negative 1 and add them together to use elimination to solve this system, in which case these cancel, and I get negative 5b equals negative 5, so b equals 1. And then I can plug it back into either one of these equations, so I'll use the original equation here in the top because that's easy enough to use, in which case I get A equals 2. So there's my answers for A and B. So when I want the partial fraction decomposition, I'm going to go back up to the top and plug in A is 2 and B is 1. So if you were to graph this and graph this, they should be exactly the same. Here's our partial fraction decomposition. Okay, the next problem wants to find the vertex focus directrix and focal width of the parabola. So first thing we're going to do, obviously, is copy down the formulas off the formula sheet. Um, for parabolas, which are right here. All right, now we're going to look at this and we're going to see that we're in this column because we have y squared, not x. And we're going to use this information to find the vertex, first of all, which is h and k. So h is negative 3. Get these out of the way. Uh, and k is 2 here. So there's our vertex. All right, we also need to find the focus, 
which is right here. It's h plus p comma k. All right, we have h and uh, k. p then, if you look at this and compare, must be one. So that's an important piece of information. So I'm gonna use negative three plus one, which is negative two, and then k, which is two. So there's my focus. And then the last thing I need is the directrix, or second to last thing, the directrix is right here. It's x equals h minus p, so it'd be negative three minus one, which is negative four. And then I also want the focal width. So it helps to draw this thing to find that, in my opinion. Um, vertex at negative three, two. Uh, we know it opens right or left. We know the focus is at negative two, two. And the directrix is at negative four. So if we go to graph this thing, it obviously looks like this. Now the focal width is this distance right here. So we know the x coordinate for that is negative two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in negative two in for x into the function. And we're gonna solve for y. So we get y minus two squared because that'll give us these two points here and here. We know that they have an x coordinate of negative two but we don't know what the y coordinates are, but if we find that, we can find the focal width. So, if you plug that in, um, negative two goes in for x, negative two plus three gives you one, so this is y minus two squared equals four. Square root both sides, this is where you get y minus two equals plus or minus two, so if you add two to both sides, um, for the plus two, you would get a four here, and if you add two to both sides, which is not a minus two, this would actually give you a zero. So I didn't graph this very well, but that's a zero. So obviously if we go from y coordinate of zero to four, our focal width right here um, is equal to four. And then obviously an easy way to get that graph, here's the formula sheet, because um, you can just plug in p of one and get a fo focal width that way as well. Okay, let's try another problem then. They give us the focus and the directrix. This time they want us to write an equation um, in standard form. So I like to draw a quick sketch. The focus is at one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And the directrix is y equals one. Y equals one is this horizontal line that goes through one. So because the definition of a parabola is all the points that are equal distant from the focus and the directrix, we can graph this parabola then. Knowing that the vertex is in between these two points, so in between one and four, you can just do one plus four divided by two to find the middle, and that's five halves, 2.5. So um, this y coordinate for the vertex is 2.5, and we know the x coordinate for the vertex because that's the same as the focus there, which is three. So we know we're in this column right here, we know the vertex, so we can start filling out this equation. It's x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. So it's x minus 3 squared equals 4p times y minus 2.5. And uh, we just need to find p. Now p is the focal length. So if we just look at the distance from the vertex to the focus, that's 2.5 as well. So we can enter in 2.5 right there. Now there's other ways to do that. We could use what they gave us for the focus right there and set it equal to what we know the focus is where we know H and P and then or H and K and solve for P. But either way, we should get 2.5. I'm sorry, it should be 1.5 actually. This distance from here to here, if this Y coordinate is 2.5 uh, and this Y coordinate we know is four, then the difference between that is 1.5. And you can do that, like I said, by setting this, what we know for the focus, which is right here equal to what they gave us for the focus, and you can see that if you compare the y coordinates, 2.5 plus p has to equal four, p would be 1.5. So I can simplify that a little bit and get my answer, which is x minus three squared equals four times 1.5, which is six times y minus 2.5. So there's my equation in standard form.